Hello and welcome to the solution where we scrutinize the socio-economic doctrine of the wisdom of Kabbalah. With us is Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello. Hello. And uh, we're on talk number 143, which is a lot. Dr. Lightman, really? Interesting. We like talking, turns out. Today we'll start a series of several talks that will talk about the big ideologies of the 20th century, 21st century, left, right, and similarities and differences between that and the wisdom of Kabbalah. But one thing before we start, the entire world, uh, they assume that right and left have nothing to do with politics. It has to do with society and economy. There is also a dispute about that, but once we're talking about this now, just for us to know, we're not talking about politics, but about economy and society. Because in Israel, if you say right or left, immediately it's politics. Dr. Leitman, and it's not so in the United States? No. If you talk about it in the United States, usually it's not. So we're talking about the right and left in terms of socioeconomic views. So if we can see the PowerPoint. Again, again. On this PowerPoint, on, in this slide, we can see a discipline of eco-social, of an eco-social flow. Uh, in the center, there is social democrats. To the right, it's capitalism, and even more to the right, neoliberalism, extreme capitalism. And from the center to the left, we see socialism, and to the left of that, communism. Down below, where you have red and blue, I wrote that the more you turn to the left, the, the commentary about a social, a welfare state is more elaborate, where the state takes more care of its citizens. The more you go left, the more the welfare state is less generous, less universal, and even stingy in terms of what it gives society. Communism is more generous, capitalism is less generous. Dr. Leighton, right, okay, yeah. Well, then, so, what do you think about this? Dr. Leighton, in the meantime, I'm with you. What it says? Okay, but, you know, the way it clothes in our world, here you have different changes. Well, then, true. Look, the show isn't about policies, but uh, eventually our goal is practical. So my first question is, what is the role of economic, socioeconomic um, ideologies in the development of society? Dr. Leitman, man can't develop without ideology, without seeing the society that he lives in, the society he wants to come to, it's not enough that he has or doesn't have enough money, that he has something that he wants, that he needs, but that he also, each and every person, cares for a certain type of society, of social relations that are really important to him. He's willing to pay for it. But the main thing is, and the main thing is to change the social circumstances that he's in. Ronen, so man and society need an ideology? What kind of implications does it have that you're living in one or another kind of ideology? Dr. Leitman. Look, I lived in Russia for many years. And... I lived there in such periods where there were very sharp transitions and shifts. And I felt the measure to which ideology is a very important thing. This is actually what nourishes us. 
Without an ideology, then I live like a dog. I have what to eat. Thank God, that's it. Besides that, I don't care about anything. Ideology, an attitude toward ideology, the approach to ideology, says about the measure to which I am a human being. Can you explain that? Dr. Leitman, my attitude toward ideology, it, it means that I'm more of a human being. So suppose I'm well off economically and so on, but there's no ideology, Dr. Leitman, then you're a donkey. That feels good, really so. And there is such too. They don't care about nothing. And man, we say nonetheless that he cares about the kind of society that he lives in, how much freedom does he have, how much around him are people that think, that look for, that want to attribute themselves to one or another kind of inclination. It's very important. Movement on and or to the contrary, where you don't have what you need, your basic needs suppose, but the ideology is, uh, it really satiates you like the first immigrants here to Israel, Dr. Leighton. True. So I lived in such times in Russia. I was born in 46 and I left Russia in 1973. So my entire childhood and adolescence and everything that I have experienced there, all throughout it, I truly absorbed all of these ideological changes and currents, and I saw how much it affects people. Oh, and then the flow of ideologies that we talked about, is it a flow? Is it a sequence? Are there nuances? Or Dr. Leitman? Uh, this is something that's immersed in nature. And even though that it seems to us that it's done, that it's man-made, but it's not. It's nature that's controlling us. It has an inner flow. And therefore, we're going through different such states. And this is what we get. So, nature brought humanity to, uh, to adopt a certain ideology, to shift from one to uh, one ideology to another. Dr. Lightman, of course, in nature, there's a program that's working that is taking us from one state to the next, that presents us with different states in order for us to see ourselves, our responses, the measure to which we can or can't change, the measure to which we agree or are incapable of accepting what's going on in human society in here. It's really tremendous work done by man about how he perceives this program that exists in nature. Does he accept it or not? How he sees himself in this current of social changes. Which of the ideologies that we have seen up until now is closer to the qualities of nature? Dr. Leighton, depending on what we talk about, it's all a part of nature. It all exists in nature, from the complete minus to the complete plus, from fascism and communism and social democracy, uh, you name it. It's all in nature. We also went through times of slavery and so on. It all exists in nature. It all depends on the measure to which a person who develops is willing to accept these states and to agree with them or to change and be changed. On and, and at the end of the process, what ideology is nature leading us toward? Dr. Leitman, that everything is round, everyone's interconnected, interconnected and interdependent, all of nature is global and integral, and we have to facilitate, aid, help ourselves and nature to reach a state where everything is bullish, round-shaped. In the meantime, we're in a linear sequence. We're not in a sphere yet. 
and the concept of socialism or communism are either not mentioned or completely disregarded, and the entire flows between the center, social democrats, and capitalism and radical capitalism, as if the left side of the map is completely erased. Is it a natural development that suits the program by which nature is governing us? Dr. Leipman, no, nature wants to bring us to the recognition of evil. Nature wants to teach us who we are and the measure to which we are capable or not to accept all of these forms of nature in a way that we ourselves will choose how are things supposed to be as a result of our development. But first of all, we have to develop. Therefore, now, in the meantime, we're going through different states. And these states that we're experiencing now under the influence of the coronavirus is the first state that's worldwide, global, and integral. And it is starting to teach us how do we relate to nature and how are we supposed to be? Meaning, here I really see a divine hand. God, God in his... In gematria equals nature, so talking about one or the other is the same. So, moving toward more egoistic ideologies serves the purpose of nature to advance us toward the recognition of evil. Dr. Leitman, yes, because nature advances us by increasing the egoistic desire in us. Can you estimate how will this scale, what it, will it look like in 10 years, suppose, Dr. Leighton? I'm sure that people will start very soon to feel, not in 10 years, how incapable we are of, we can't continue living or existing in the way that we do. We're not living in open space doing anything we feel like. And even that we're all bad, but we all exist somehow as if everything is okay. We're not taking into consideration that we're inside of nature. Let's say that we're inside of a bubble and this bubble, inside this bubble, is the entire universe with all the galaxies and everything that it has, doesn't matter what and how, infinitely, whatever. It all exists according to a law, and its law is that all the parts of nature, all the forces are all in one integral system. And therefore, we have to learn this system and see where are we in regard to it? Because it's possible that it will seem to us that we're advancing like it was with capitalism. And now we're gradually starting to come out of it against our own will. So it seems to us that everything's nice and good and will develop. And eventually we will reach a state where everyone will be well off. Also those that in the meantime are behind, they too will once be rich and everyone will. And here we see that, no, probably it's not exactly so because there are other forces in nature that are integral forces that nature wants to bring us to a kind of balance, unity, connection. And this is completely opposed to the usage of the egoistic, capitalistic world to receive. Ronen, when the Eastern and Western systems collapsed, uh, there was this uh, famous article called The End of History. Ideologies fell apart and so on. Do you predict the state of the end of ideologies where all this will become irrelevant, Dr. Leighton? Yes, and very soon. Why? Because we see that today we have no ideology, no ideology. We can't exist according to 
the old program, the Americans that thought that they can print money endlessly and to continue this way, that also doesn't work. We see that we can't come closer, countries can't come closer, but that we will always have struggles. In short, our ego, the will to receive, the egoistic will to receive that exists in everyone in the meantime, is distancing us from one another, not allowing us to come any closer if we want to, even if we want to. Let's build some international organization that will include everyone. Simply doesn't work. Man's ego, man's nature is evil from the very start, not allowing us to build anything properly, correctly. Not at home, not in our family, not at work, not in business, not in the country, not between countries. And therefore, here we find ourselves in a state where we're searching for what to do. But still, we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, and then this is a search that humanity is in for a hundred plus years with revolutions and things, the search for ideologies. And we're saying maybe there is something new, something that's outside of this flow. Dr. Lightman, I would say that there is something natural, but the natural example is not something that is really accepted by us. Nature is showing us that it is one big integral and global system that is entirely interconnected from one end to the other in all directions. But we can't be that way. I can't accept nature entirely as a circle or as a sphere. And in it, I relate to all of humanity as a kind of sphere, as something round that I love everyone regardless of color, nationality, Everything. I can't. What's, what is demanded of us? We were created in such a way that I hate everyone. And here I'm shown that I have to connect, unite with everyone. Um, all in all, what is demanded of a person here? Ronan, today we'll start to talk about uh, the left a bit, but when we'll reach talking about the right, we'll see that the right is closest to man's natural uncorrected qualities, and therefore right now it has an advantage all around the world. It's rare to find true leftist countries in the world nowadays, Dr. Leitman, until we will reach a worldwide war. And hopefully we can prevent that. So, if we can see slide number two. This is a short list, but we have the main things here. If I have to characterize what is a socioeconomic left, it's a collectivist communal approach with its central values of solidarity, social equality, inclination toward equality, education, propaganda. There are assumption in regard to human nature is pretty realistic. They assume that human nature is exploitative and egoistic, and therefore their solution is putting many limitations on people, on society, on the um, business sector. And for this, there is a uh, a government that is truly involved in the life of citizens, Dr. Lightman. Meaning, once again, we'll have KGB and all these things. Oh, and then we'll talk about this, maybe even today. We'll also talk about the radicalization of where is it supposed to come to. Let's talk about the mainstream. Dr. Lightman, this is how the Bolsheviks started. Straight after the revolution. Ronen, but there is an ideological reason because if we'll try to get along with each other, we'll eat each other, then the government has to come in as a regulator and limit us in order for us to be able to develop a collectivist society and so on. Dr. Leitman, and what about human nature? Oh, no. Probably it's suppressed. We'll talk about that. So since the solution is putting many limitations over business, society, man, 
Therefore, you have a centralized government that is in, involved in everything. And the commentary of a welfare state is a very universal one and generous one. Everyone receives and generously. This is the classical model of the left. I see that you're starting to compare to how it happened practically in different places in the world. Dr. Leighton, I saw all these things run in front of me for decades and practice, and what did we get as a result? Oh, and we'll get to that in a second. The first thing I wanted to ask about this is, I look at it today, and I see that the left, too, has adopted several concepts of the left. It's it's not against the left. It simply talks a bit uh, uh, a bit more about balance between consumption and society and solidarity. Doctor Leitner, it doesn't talk about the correction of man's nature, but let's allow man to develop according to their thriving ego and so on. I would ask, why are they not going in the direction of education to limit the egoistic human nature, to correct it? And then we will not need to every time develop and so on, but... Uh, to live a relatively modest life, normal life. And then we have no problem. Oh, and I think that the answer is, and we talked about this several years ago on this show, that there is a Scandinavian Nordic model that's not that successful anymore, but the world sees it as something kind of successful. And therefore, why education if we live can live like the Nordic people? And therefore, the world's as if drawn to the left, but it's capitalistic left, not the classical left like we're familiar with from Marx and so on. The next question is slide number, uh, excerpt number seven, where Bala Sulam tries to sort uh, the regimes. He says that, wait a second, I need glasses. Okay. Sorry, it starts with the words, ultimately. Ultimately, the diligent will exploit the laboring backward to the best of their ability. They will not, they will take no pity on them. The diligent will always suck out the butter and the cream, leaving the workers with only the hay. The only question concerns what remains for the workers after the after the trust after they exploit them after they're exploited by the diligent and the measure of enslavement the diligent imposed on them it is only according to the measure of the leftovers that the diligent leave for the backward that we are to examine every government differentiate between the regimes and choose which one is preferable. What is Bala Sulam offering here, Dr. Leighton? He's actually offering us to see that there is nothing more important than a society in which no one's closed inside themselves, but that are that they're concerned with others. But eventually it has to be a change inside man, that the more we have the ability to make this kind of switch inside ourselves where we will be concerned with others more than we are concerned with ourselves. This is a matter of education and the upper forces of nature that can influence a person and lead us to it. If we do not use correctly, um, if we do not use this correctly, we will not be able to rise above our egoistic nature and then we'll only suffer more and more. 
Bala Sulam says that there is exploitation in any kind of regime, and only according to that can you differentiate the regimes. Dr. Leitman, true? We see how many kinds of regimes did we go through from the beginning of our history and until now. If so, if we read this um, excerpt by Bala Sulam, then the question is, if you're trying to sort ideologies according to this criteria, of the measure to which the diligent exploit the, those that are less diligent, let's call them, Dr. Leitman, this is what we're all the time advancing toward, more and more exploitation, up to the point where the exploited doesn't feel that he is being exploited, that he has a home and vacation and different other things in order to exploit him to the fullest. Oh, and then, yes, exploitation becomes more and more sophisticated from year to year in a way that a person feels even free. He fights for his freedom, not not seeing that he is being exploited. So do you really see some true difference between the right and the left? Dr. Light, no, no, it's all egoistic masquerade. But in relation to man, there is a difference. So it's also according to a person's character, according to the state that he's living in, the society he's living in, the country he's living in. You can't compare everyone to Scandinavia. So my question is, which of today's approaches seems to you closer to the truth? Not to the truth of the wisdom of Kabbalah, but to our current state in 2021. Dr. Leitman, I don't think that today there is any kind of ideology. Today, we're on the borderline of the new state, on the threshold of a new state where we don't really feel that we have some kind of principle today. It's only about printing money and to stuff humanity, each and every nation and each and every country, to blind them in order to be able to exist in any kind of regime for a certain period of time. Today, I don't see that there are ideologies and also the struggle between ideologies. It's all in all in order to occupy the people with something, for them to think that they're a part of this or a part of that, for them to take to the streets and start yelling and burning something, breaking showcases. Ah. So we can say that the elites are above any ideological disputes. They're rich, and it doesn't matter right or left, they have one interest, and the dispute is for us to be more involved and vote and have hopes, but eventually we serve the same elites. Dr. Leighton, yeah. So the government can struggle and do this and do that in Parliament and between parties, but above that, there, everything's, they're sitting and enjoying the radiance of divinity. Those that read your posts, your books, can you understand why, uh, and those that are a bit familiar with what Bala Salam says, why do they attribute it to the left side of the map? Dr. Leighton, because we're talking about the order, an order in the world where everyone will live an equal, uh, will have an equal standard of living, that there will be no one who's more, who's less, who's richer, who's poorer, that everyone will really have everything that the other has too. So it's left. Oh, and then let's read uh, the, an excerpt, a well-known expert. Yeah. He says, I must admit that I see the socialistic idea of equal and just division as the truest. 
Our planet is rich enough to provide for all of us, so why should we fight this tragic war to the death which has been dimming our lives for generations? Let us share among us the labor and its produce equally. And the end to all the troubles, after all, what pleasure do even the millionaires among us derive from their possessions, if not the security of their sustenance for them and for their progeny several generations on? But in a regime of just division, they will also have the same certainty and even more. And should you say that they will not have the respect that they had while they were property owners, that too is nothing for all those strong ones who have gained the power to earn respect as property owners and so on. He comes and looks at what we have and says that the social idea is closest to this picture. Dr. Leitner, it's against our own nature. Everyone wants to be a leader. Everyone wants to be great. I will rule. But according to what we see in nature, there is the, the most correct, true just form is socialistic. How is the socio-economic doctrine of the wisdom of Kabbalah close to what we just read? Dr. Layton, because we are all, because we all suckle from the same nature, from the same planet, because we're all interdependent, because we all belong to one upper force, then we have to make out of ourselves to a round shape, ball like shape, and we have to reach a state where only with the help of mutual support, do we reach a state where all of our forces will come together into an ideal circle, and then we will get the upper force that is revealed in us equally to everyone, Dr. Ronen, and this equal revelation to everyone can be expressed in this world in a kind of society that externally meets the socialistic idea. Dr. Leiden, yeah, we're not talking about the next world or something, but in our world, eventually, we have to reach a state where everyone will have the same standard of living, where everyone will be content, satisfied, and will not want more, but that they will really be content by being equal with everyone. But along with this, person has to know that he has to get constant guidance and work in order to work on himself in order for his evil inclination not to jump and force him to be greater than others. So this model has to come with an inner model, educational model, that will even out, balance out the evil inclination. Dr. Leitman, yes, we have to work on a person from both sides from the social perspective and economic one. one and so if we're separating between the economic existence of a society and their educational spiritual engagement, we can say that in terms of the provision chain, it is a socialistic model, but we also have to continue that the evil man's inclination is evil from the start and not to only be satisfied with a socialistic model. Of course, says Dr. Dr. Lehman will not succeed otherwise. It's all a matter of education. So the inner model, what is it like? Suppose logistically we got organized in a socialistic model. What is the inner model then? Dr. Leitman, to me it seems that we, now that we're a bit more acquainted with the coronavirus and so on, that nature will force us to care for general provision, general supply for everyone, and by that we'll gradually reach um, equilibrium for everyone. And in order for, to force everyone to come to that because we have no choice, then we will have to work along with it on man's education for everyone to understand and accept this form as something necessary. I think that after half a year or a year, suppose, we will be in such a state where everyone will agree to a just kind of distribution because simply we have no choice. And 
and that by that we will start to build, put together systems, such systems that will equally relate to everyone. And these systems will be social systems. Uh, political system, it doesn't matter how, how you call it, but that it won't belong to any party or a certain person. And so the corrected model is a socialistic one and what can convince a, per, what can convince a person to live in this kind of model. Dr. Leitman, he'll have no choice. I don't think that it has to do with society dealing with a certain capitalist, but nature will do it. That nature actually brings all of society, all people to a state where they can't behave any differently and also a person sees that he has no control and all of his profits and all of these things, they are completely, completely give him no use but to the contrary that he is in great danger and what can happen is that if he is included in a society he promises himself and society and his family a distinguished form of living and sometimes it seems to me that the separation that we make between some kind of external and the internal models in a person are kind of artificial because they nourish each other Dr. Lincoln, true. And so how can we have as a society socialistic models and internally something else that's combined? Dr. Lightman, so education is what we need. Everyone has to be educated and see how nature is arranged, that nature is global and integral, and it forces us to come closer in our structure, in the structure that we build, it forces us to come closer to that system that exists in nature and we will not be able to do this in any other way we'll be uh, pressured in a way that of course will agree the, where's the diffusion between the internal and external circles the inner social life of a person and the external economic logistic circle Dr. Leibman we want to be in balance, we want to feel good, understand, feel confident and secure. It won't work unless we bring these two balls together into one. But is there a certain mechanism of diffusion? How do they interact? Because a society could be with a certain inner ideology and externally with a completely different clothing. Dr. Leighton, only through education. There's no other way to answer this, either through riots that are beginning today and it's going to be an entire mess up to the point of a world war in a way that it, the rich, nothing will help them and they'll have also no property left and they'll be afraid for their life. For example, today, you know, they're aiding plans and so on, and also in Israel there was a dispute to aid everyone or only those, uh, like a stimulus, stimulus package. We need to help everyone or only that those that really need it? Dr. Leighton, only those that really need it. Why give something to someone that doesn't really need it? Just to spend our national treasury? Oh, and then those that are in favor of um, a universal social plan uh, say that it builds solid solidarity, Dr. Lightman. To the contrary, it ruins solidarity. I treat people equally, equally. How? How could it be that I give everyone a kilogram of bread? There are those that don't need it at all. They're telling me from their doorstep when I come to give them the bread they say throw it away we don't need it so by that I only show everyone how I'm really not 
fit for the correct social order, are not built for it. Well, and so only if only the weak receive, you're leaving the rich out of the picture. Dr. Leitman, I have to bring everyone to an equal standard of living. But in the current state, there are big differences. So if this country helps only the weak and they're still not altruistic, they disconnect. Dr. Leitman, I think that all of this will soon come to an end. Okay, slide number four. This is Marx's deterministic development according to different stages, and let's first talk about this and then about how did it happen practically. Marx, he predicted a kind of process that, first of all, there's the Industrial Revolution that will lead to the development of capitalism, and from there, there will be the golden age of capitalism, but it won't be able to to restrain itself, it will become deviated, distorted capitalism. As a result, the proletarian will start having a certain concept of their social status, which will bring to a social revolution. And then there are different stages of communism, crude communism and pure communism. This is more or less the process that Marx predicted. Today, in this process, where are we? Dr. Leitman, I don't see exactly what it says there. Today, we are in a stage where nature systematically is pressuring us in order to force us to give the right definition to who we are and what nature is. Nature entirely wants to be global and integral, and this is how it is gradually revealing itself to us. Surely this is how it is, but it's being revealed to us gradually. And we have to understand that we're not suited to nature whatsoever, and then how can we build systems in order to suit it? When Marx talked about this process, he predicted that every stage will be built on the ruins of the previous one. And Balas writes about this. He says that with all the ch- indeed as truthful as this ideal might be, I do not promise its adherence even a shred of paradise. Quite the contrary, they are guaranteed to have troubles as in hell, as the living proof of Russia has already taught us. However, this does not negate the correctness of this ideal. Its only fault is that to us it is unripe. In other words, our generation is not yet morally ready to accept this government of just an equal division. This is so because we have not had enough time to evolve sufficiently to accept the motto of from each according to his skills to each according to his needs from the nation. Dr. Leitman, we are in this transition. See how the corona is arranging us that we can't do anything. You can print as much money as you want, by that you only bring the end closer. And therefore, instead of them, I would wait as much as possible. Because every time that you print and disperse, print and disperse, you're decreasing the value of world world wealth, capital. And I have nothing to tell them. Time is working against capital. Capitalism. Ronen. Bala Sulam wrote this in the 1950s. He said that humanity is unripe yet to accept the idealist, the, the idea that he wrote about here. And since then, the world went through a thing or two. And today, we're more ripe to accept it, or still not. Dr. Leighton, the thing is, my question is, do we have a choice? I think that today people are more capable of deciding that we have no choice, but that we have to change human nature, society, because otherwise we will not be able to survive, because our ego is finishing us off. 
We're closer to this understanding. And even though that we had a good life and a good development, capitalistic one, and everyone was well off, even though that there was this kind of whirlpool, but still, that's it. It was only in order for us to be able to say that we have no choice, that we have to reach an equilibrium, a happy middle. Oh, and like you're saying, because nature is pressuring us and we talked about the recognition of evil, it all seems like a threatening, pressuring situation. Dr. Leitman, yeah. Conan, is there a better way? Dr. Leitman, no. We have to learn only from blows. We have no other way to learn from anything else. But these blows is what we are starting now to feel. And let's hope that the explanation given to us by the wisdom of Kabbalah is something that we can publicize to all of humanity and that this will help us to nonetheless be saved of the blows to advance before before the whip, before the stick reaches us from behind, we will run more quickly. And so in between these two reigns, pleasure and pain, we'll talk about this on our next show. Thank you very much, Dr. Leitman. And thank you, our viewers, Dr. Leitman. All the best.